In the previous video, we looked at setting up Drizzle with Next Hub. In this video, it's going to be a little bit of a shorter one. We're just going to set up the users table and so that we can get started with authentication. So we're back in our ship project. And what we're going to do is go to our um, schema of our database. And if you remember from the last video, we stored that in the root project server and then database. So we'll go to the server folder and then database and then schema. So this is where we were in the last video. We created just an ID on the users table. And then after that, what we did is we ran the migration for uh, SQLite to create this SQL file that uh, will run on our database in a Nitro plugin. If that sounds exciting and you didn't see it, go check out the last video. But Today, what we're going to do is we're going to update the, um, the table to have everything that we might need in order to get users onboarded to our um, uh, video course platform. So one of the things that's very difficult when setting up your database uh, schema is knowing ahead of time what all your columns would be. In a perfect world, we can just close our eyes and see our entire schema and be like, okay, I'll need this and I'll need that. And there are tools that we can use to draw out an estimation of what we'll need. Uh, we need users, we need this, we need that, we need videos. But I think um, that also just ends to the same result where if you design this entire database thing uh, ahead of time, you obviously need to know kind of what your main entities are. In this app, we can easily say it's going to be users and videos. Those are the two things that we have to deal with. Users can have subscriptions, but at this point of time, I'm not sure if I want to make subscriptions a table of its own, because technically it's not subscriptions, it's just one-time payment. And all we need to do is have some sort of column on our table to tell us whether this user has paid and whether the user has not paid, so that we can use that value in API requests and everything to see whether the user has access to the video or not. So in my mind, I would just want to keep it simple and we might just need one little property on the users table, but this might change over time. So I'm not going to plan ahead. I'm just going to do what I think is right now. And when disaster strikes, then I'm going to sit up all night changing the schema. But for now, let's get started. So we're going to use email um, authentication, email password, just the good old um, email password. Don't roll your own auth, use some library, whatever. Uh, I'm going to roll it myself using some cool tools that Nuxt also provides to help us with session management and all that. But for today, I think we'll just add the email and this is going to be a string email and it has to be unique. Uh, and this is not string. This is going to be text. So we can go to text and then or we can import text from SQLite core. And since we're using SQLite, let's just have a quick refresher on what are the types that we can use. So SQLite supports null, integer, real, text and blob. These are the trusted ones that you can use. And if you want to learn more about this, I really recommend checking out High Performance SQLite by uh, Aaron Francis at highperformancesqlite.com. Um, you'll learn a lot about the SQLite types and uh, queries and optimizing your, your, and optimizing your SQL. But anyway... Let's get back to this. So we have a integer is our primary key. Then we'll have an email, which is just a unique email. No users can have the same email. We're not going to keep the user's name. Uh, we're just going to use email and password. But instead of saving it as password, I'm going to be explicit and say password hash and then text in the database. I want to store this as password hash with an underscore. I just prefer it that way. and. We're not going to do not null and we should do not null on the email because users need an email before they can be created. And the reason we're not going to say not null on password hash is because we, um, we are <clears throat> going to preemptively uh, create accounts for users when they sign up through Stripe with the pre-order. So when they do their purchase we already can get the email from the email they entered in their purchase we can preemptively create an account but we can't set a password for them so we'll set the password as null 
and then we can check that null value to see whether the user has been onboarded and use a middleware to redirect them for them to set their um, password. So we, we're going to preemptively create accounts and um, uh, when users pre-order without an account. Oh, I can't type today. Okay, so that's going to be our password hash. So currently we have ID, email, password hash. So the users will also, I'm thinking I'm going to use a customer ID because customer ID is something that we can get from Stripe once the subscription or the pre-order is completed. And we can also get it if it's an already created account and then it, uh, it's purchased. So customer ID makes sense for me to have a nullable field. If there is a customer ID, that means the user did subscribe um, to Stripe. If there's no customer ID, it means they haven't paid for the course yet. Um, so we can do that. It also has to be unique. Uh, we can't have the same customer ID for multiple users and it doesn't have to be not null. So it can be nullable so that we can see that the user is not um, a customer. And then just for some sanity, um, we're going to have created ad. We might want to have like an admin of seeing like the users based uh, sorted on the and ordered on the created ad fields. So we're going to do text uh, created at. And actually, I think I'm going to use integers. So I'm going to say integer created at and then use a drizzle um, this is going to be not null, but use a drizzle specific thing where you can say the um, mode is going to be a timestamp. So this is a way to be able to represent integers as timestamps. So this way, when you query out of your database, it automatically gets converted to um, dates. And what we want to do when we um, create a user, we don't want to set this ourselves every time so what we're going to do is we're going to create a default function uh, we have to say dot default function and we're just going to say new date and drizzle will take care of converting this to the timestamp that we need um, in the database it's going to be stored as an integer but we are going to represent it as dates in our code so and then we can that's about all we need for that. And then we can also do an updated at, which is going to be the same stuff, but the default function would also be that, but there is another special function that Drizzle provides, which is on update so that we can let Drizzle handle setting this whenever we write to the, the model or um, to make sure that the, the timestamp is, is updated. So we can say on update, do that and also this is never going to be null we'll say that explicitly so these two things uh, the default function and the up on update aren't things that are going to be represented in SQL it's going to be handled by the ORM itself just a nice little um, helper on top of that so I would say that this is probably all that we need right now for users um, we might add to this or we might uh, change it in the future but let's see if we go back to our package.json we've added this nice script db generate which um, which uh, creates the sql from our um, from our schema and now you can see we got a new sql file in our migrations and we can go to our database file and check the new one and you'll see alter table add users or alter table add users i mean alter table users add the columns and specify their types and you can see with created add it's just integer not null so there's nothing about defaulting with a function or something like that and then there's unique indexes on email and unique indexes on customer um on the customer e uh, customer id sorry so that'll be it for our initial user schema. 
Uh, we won't work with that too much right now. In the next couple of videos, we're going to be looking at building out the UI, the modules that we'll install to do that um, so that we can speed up our development. One of the goals of this course is to go as fast as possible. So we won't be doing too much from scratch. We have a little bit of from scratch work, but we'll be using Nuxt modules quite heavily. So yeah, the next couple of videos is just some UI development and then we'll start working with authentication and actually start using our users model.